Hey, hey, all you Minties, this is the Uncanny Omar, and you all asked for it. Five more collected editions hidden gems that are horror-centric, so stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Now, before I even get started, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? We put out videos every day, and it helps with our YouTube algorithm. And the other thing I was going to say before I get this list started is, even though these are hidden gems to me, because I don't hear a lot of people talk about these, you may have heard of some of these. You may have read some of these. You may hate some of these. But this is just my opinion. I would love to know. If you have read them and didn't like them, leave those comments down below. You know I don't shy away from negative comments. I like criticism, and I, you know, it, it helps me improve my videos. And just because we don't agree on something doesn't mean that I'm going to immediately delete your comment and ban you from the channel. That's not the way I work. I mean, the difference of opinion is what makes this world go round, and that, that's a lot more uh, philosophical than I wanted to get this today. So, let's go ahead and get started. I do have a lot more, by the way, so if you want me to continue this Hidden Gem series, just leave it down below, and I, I would more than happy to do so. Now, Again, my opinion, but let's go ahead and get started with these five next hidden gems. Kicking off this list today is Animosity by Marjorie Bennett and Rafael de la Torre. Now, this is a series that's ongoing from Aftershock. I think, I don't know if it's on hiatus, but it's still going on. It's over 28 issues, and there's a series of trade paperbacks. That's the way I've been collecting them. There are two oversized hardcovers called Year One and Year Two. And the reason I haven't upgraded yet is because both of those hardcovers are different sizes. So I'm hoping for a reprint of volume one or year one rather that will match up with year two because I have OCD like that. So the premise is pretty simple. One day for no apparent reason, the animals wake up. And when I mean by wake up, I mean they start to think for themselves. They start talking and most of these animals, not all, want revenge on the human race for either taking their babies or for using them as meat or food whatever the reason is these animals want revenge we've seen this premise before like for example the planet of the apes one of the things that i enjoy about this series is the big question of ethics i love that the ethics of equality and what makes one a person big fan of that now for those of you that can't tolerate animal cruelty I will say please stay away from this book because there are some especially when animals are attacking the humans have to defend themselves or animal on animal violence is that is that even a thing uh, it has to be right but anyway the story focuses on jesse who's an 11 year old girl and she has a family and her family dog is sandor and sandor loves jesse and no matter what he will protect jesse and it's this beautiful relationship about a girl and her dog and her journey to find her big brother in another city. So she goes off with Sandor and of course there's trouble because the animals are raging against humans. And then humans are put in a corner as to what to do. Do they defend themselves? Do they kill these animals? Some of them who were family pets. The series is very intriguing and it is kind of a fast read i will tell you that and but you will go back and look at this wonderful artwork by de la torre it is so easy to follow as well as juan do he does a couple of fill-in issues throughout the series and you'll hear his name later on and then there's this uh in the collections there's variant covers too and the variant covers are gorgeous there's like takes on charlotte's web and other homages as the series goes on but starting off the list i have to recommend this it's a great read for those of you that have not read it Number two on this list is Redlands by Jordi Belair and Vanessa Del Rio. Now, you may have heard of Vanessa Del Rio when I was talking about The Empty Man because she was the original artist on that series. And then Jordi Belair, you've probably seen her name a lot, particularly when I told you all to read Lake of Fire. She was the colorist on that. So she's been a colorist in comic books for many years, and I've never read anything by her except for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's the very first thing I read. And then she did a Vampirella Red Sonia storyline. But this is the first work that I've read by her that is her own creator, own stuff. Her own creator, own stuff. That sounds kind of silly. But anyway, where was I? Now, the name Redlands comes from the actual town where this takes place. It's Redlands, Florida in 1977. And in this town, three witches are escaping a lynch mob uh, by the local police. Now, later on, this coven of witches lead this revenge plot against all these racists and rapists in this southern uh, town. And it's all it has this really atmospheric, like, swamp gothic setting to it that the colors, Jordi Belair supplying the colors for this, not only writing it, 
just really sets the mood of the book. And Del Rey, I think, is the perfect artist because her sketch-like artwork really plays off this raw and emotionally charged story. Uh, there is a little bit of animal cruelty in here when you're dealing with these type of witches. Uh, it's mature content for sure because of sex and nudity and over-the-top violence. So if that kind of stuff turns you off, you may want to skip this one. And out of all of these, this one here has the most unsettling imagery. There are two trade paperbacks and that finishes off the series. Now throughout the story, you don't know who to trust. You don't know who falls in love with who and if that person is just being used as a pawn. But I like that about this series. To me, it is gripping, it is suspenseful, and it's going to leave you asking questions. And you're not going to be able to get those questions answered until you read the entire series. Pestilence by Frank Terry and Oleg Okunev. I hope I'm pronouncing that gentleman's name right. So this is collected in two trade paperbacks. This is from Aftershock, or it's collected in one oversized hardcover. So this is Frank Terry. He's written Harley Quinn. He's written Wolverine, Deadpool. He's written the recent miniseries for Marvel called Ravencroft, which takes place in the Absolute Carnage universe. And honestly, I've really enjoyed his uh, stories. I really like his take on Weapon X. So to me, this is the first time I've gone in and read something by him, also creator-owned. So the story is set in the 14th century, and you have this ex-crusader named Roderick. And he is the leader of this team called the Fiat Lux. The Fiat Lux. I can't remember how to pronounce it, nor did I ever know. And they pretty much are agents of the church. Now, there's a strange sickness in the 14th century, right? That is infecting people and they are reacting to it violently and attacking one another. So, we're talking zombies in the 14th century. And we're also talking the explanation for the Black Plague. And I think that's really cool. When you take historical fiction like that, you take something that is well known, like the Black Plague, and you give it a little twist. Like, what if the Black Plague was actually zombies? I like that about this story. So the church fears that the Pope is going to be next. He's going to be affected by this illness, or zombie attack, rather. So they send the Fiat Lukes to go and rescue him and take him to Paris. But it's not that easy, because there are zombies everywhere. No matter what town they come upon, no matter who they meet, there are zombies everywhere. Again, this one is mature content. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say it. All these books are mature content, just to play it safe. And there's a cool spin on the zombies, because they're getting smarter and smarter. So that's even creepier to me. Now, fair warning. The foul language and graphic imagery, and I mean lots and lots of gore, may detract from any appeal this might have had for some of you all. And I can understand that that is a turnoff for some people because there is a lot of sex, there's a lot of nudity, there's a lot of violence. So keep that in mind. But I will say that the gore, to me, is so over the top that it just kind of becomes comical. And the visuals by Okunev are almost too cartoony to take seriously. I, I remember my wife like is not a fan of violent movies like um, Goodfellas or Casino because that stuff is realistic. But when she watches things like Kill Bill, she is all about that because the violence is just so over the top, it becomes completely unbelievable. And that's the way that I see this series. And again, I just want to remind you all to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and smash that like button. Dark Ark by Cullen Bunn and Juan Do. And I told you all that you would see Juan Do's name on this list again. And you sure as hell can bet that you're going to see Cullen Bunn's name again. And if I were to make another horror list, his name would be on there again. Look at this freaking cover, though. That cover is amazing. As soon as I saw that cover, I was sold. I didn't even have to look on the inside. And I saw Cullen's Bunn attached to it. Hells yes. So this is from Aftershock. There's a series of three trades. Uh, there is an oversized hardcover. And then there's a new series. I think it's called After the Dark or something like that. Or After the Ark. Now, we all know the story of Noah. How he was tasked to build an ark by God to take animals and his family around the world for 40 days and 40 nights. But this is not the story of Noah. This is the story of Shrey, who's a sorcerer that has committed unspeakable evil acts in his life. And he's been asked by a darker force, not God, to build his own ark and save the unnatural creatures of the world. And what a freaking awesome concept that is. I mean, we're talking vampires, we're talking manticores, naga, the dragons, just all these mythical creatures that you think of are in this arc. For 40 days and for 40 nights, they have to get along. But do they? But not only that, 
they also have to ensure that Noah's Ark survives so that they will have prey once the flood goes down. That's awesome. And on top of that, Bun adds a murder mystery in the first story arc that keeps you asking questions. Who did this? Who Was it one of the humans or was it one of the monsters? But I really enjoyed that about the first arc. It had me hooked. And then you have Juan Do's artwork, who has a very anime-ish look to his art. But I don't know. I just really like his creature designs. And I like how over the top some of his humans are, like Shrey. He's so huge. Um, big and bulky and you know it, it adds to that magical element when you have I could see this working as an anime maybe that's why I enjoy this but anyway I highly recommend the series last book on the list is definitely one that I don't hear anyone talk about this is the unknown uh, this is by Mark Wade and Mank Ustervir I hope I'm pronouncing that gentleman's name right but this is the omnibus edition this is from boom comics uh, it's also collected in a series of trade paperbacks but this is an all-in-one this series is about Catherine Allingham, and she is the world's most famous private investigator. However, she has a malignant tumor in her brain, and she has been given six months to live at best. So, one thing that Catherine hopes to do before she passes away is solving the greatest mystery of the world, and that is what happens to us after we die. How are you not hooked on that? just that 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 premise is so freaking awesome i mean yeah we're talking about mark wade right we're talking about the guy that wrote kingdom come had a phenomenal run on flash fantastic four he did the history of the marvel universe this is a guy that can write just about every character and even his own series irredeemable and incorruptible are about superheroes so i've never seen him out of his element like this this is so unique because we're talking about a witty character and she borders like this smart ass know-it-all personality but she also has likable, redeemable qualities about her. Like, you feel bad that she's dying or she's going to die in six months. Like, she doesn't rub how smart she is in other people's faces, but she comes across almost like Sherlock from the recent BBC series. And speaking of Sherlock, she actually hires somebody as not really her bodyguard, but somebody to keep an open mind when she goes on these new cases around the world. And she calls him Doyle. Or, I'm sorry, he shouldn't call him. That is his name, Doyle. His last name is Doyle. Now, I think that's interesting because we're talking about Sherlock, and I wonder if that's a take on, of course, Arthur Conan Doyle. Now, to me, the artwork by Oosterveer is very plain, is very clear, and is very basic. And I don't mean that in any kind of insulting way. I just mean that it is very easy to follow because there's a lot of action sequences here that have no dialogue, so the art is what really carries the story. So it is a pretty fast read, well, at least the first half, uh, because there are two collections in this omnibus. This is, like I mentioned, all in one. But to me, the artwork is beautiful and creepy, especially some of the images that Catherine sees. And I wanted to see what else he did, Oosterveer. And sadly, um, he passed away in 2011 in a motorcycle accident. So when I went to Google him, it sucks. I hate when I find an artist that I like and I want to follow what else they did. They're no longer with us. Uh, but this is one, like I mentioned, it's not one that I see in a lot of people's list. Even Mark Wade doesn't really talk about this book. Um, but damn, was this book so good. I highly recommend it, especially that first half. That first half is so good. You will be hooked immediately and you'll want to know all the secrets, like where the story is going. But I can't say a word. And that, as they say, is that. Now, some of these books can be purchased from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And those were five more hidden gems. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to continue this segment. Well, they don't have to be horror-centric, right? If you want me to continue this segment of hidden gems, let me know. You all know I love talking back to you all, and I love interacting with you all. And if you all ask for something, I will make sure I put it on the list to get it done. Uh, so please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. Check out our Redbubble and our Patreon. Those are amazing ways to support the channel. And thank you to our existing patrons. You all make videos like this possible. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. More importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, 
and much love to all of you.